how would you sum up your your main event win? I definitely ran like crazy hot, obviously, but um, it was like kind of the perfect storm because I, I got sober um, the end of two, 2011. I went back to Toronto and I was just playing like I was on the sickest schedule ever where I was just playing nonstop, like no, uh, very little social life, just hang out with my roommate and a couple of other poker players, just all in poker. I started playing one, two by, by May, I was playing 10, 20 again. I was winning like 200 online in the first five months, uh, like playing in the rest of the world field, which, which was, is like still to this day would be, would be really good. And I, I just felt like really locked in and then, um, I had, even though I wasn't playing tournaments, like a lot of my friends at the time were, uh, were playing like Chewy was playing a bunch. I hung out with him a lot. Um, obviously Tony was playing a lot of these tournaments, Christian harder. So like I would, I would hear, uh, hand histories from them all the time in these events. Um, and especially like that summer living with, with, uh, Tony and Christian always hearing spots talking about uh, these tournament spots. And then when I'd show up to play an event, I was kind of like an unknown to the tournament guys. And I, I felt like I had like an idea of what was going on and how I could exploit uh, like the uh, like the metagame back then w without people having like any idea how I played. So I definitely was able to just like over bluff everyone um, and really just like run stuff that <laughs> wouldn't get through these days because people just will look you up. Um, so I mean, that was definitely a huge advantage. I also think that like back then people were raising really small, three betting really small, four betting really small and like I just didn't really fold because you, you're not really supposed to. And I guess back then people didn't, um, people folded too much uh, pre-flop and post-flop. So like you were just rewarded for being an animal. What, what did this do for you? What did it mean to, to, to win this tournament? And then, I mean, it's really right at the end of the summer, right? Both right here. Boom, boom. Yeah. So a good story about this. Like I, so I, I relapsed in 2011. I lost like 400 K. Um, excuse me. Sorry. Um, I had like a couple hundred thousand left to my name and I was playing in some private games back then in the Maryland area, whenever I'd be home from uh, Toronto and he, Tony started staking me for these private games. Um, I lost like 40,000 around the holidays and I went back to Toronto and I was like, Hey, I, I don't want to give, give you any of my online action. Like. You, you, I still want you, I'm going to get out of makeup. Like if I'm not out of makeup in the next year, I'll start giving you some of my online action. Um, and like, you can have my action at the world series. So we go, we get, we get to Vegas. I'm only, I only have seven tournaments on my schedule. I'm going to play cash. I'm like losing a bit. I think I'm like 60 K in makeup now, maybe 70. I get into the Paul Pierce game at, at, uh, that house. I think Jeremiah was running that game. Yeah. Um, I win like 50k there, so I'm like almost unstuck. And then these tournament scores start happening. So now I'm up on the stake. And like I think I think Tony tells me at some point that uh, you know I don't I don't need to like stay on the stake because at this point now I had really recovered financially to have like several hundred thousand and not need to be staked for anything. But I told him like I uh, you know I gave him my word like a year I'm, you're gonna have me for the series. So then the 10k six max happens, I win. Then he tells me again, you know, you, you don't have to be staked for the main. Like it's kind of ridiculous. Like you just made me all this money. And I was I remember leaving the front door of our of our house that summer. I was like, nah, man, we'll, we'll just keep it on, but give me 60 40 for the main. So then uh, that then I wrote him a fucking huge check. <laughs> tell me about the um the main event where you I believe you were down to one or two big blinds at some point. Is that true? Yeah. I played this huge pot with uh six cents. I don't, Fabrizio Gonzalez, I think is his yeah. name. He was like the most insane player ever back then. And uh, we got like five bets in on the flop when I flopped middle pair nut flush draw versus his set. And uh, and I bricked for like a, I think it was like a 4 million chip pot at 10, 20 K. And I had um, 55,000 left after that hand at 10 K, 20 K. And then the spin was on, man. I won like eights versus king jack then i won king jack versus eights then i got a reshove i got a uh, like three best shove through then How i got a four, left then? uh 140. oh jeez. Then, then i got a four then i got a four bed shove through um so like the three bed shove and the four bed shove getting those through like without having to win all in at that point in the tournament was like chipping up so much and then all of a sudden i had a million
What was the four bet hand? Do you remember? I definitely, I mean, I wasn't, not, neither one of those spots I was like bluffing or anything. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, then I had it back over a million. And I remember looking at like the point structure for player of the year because I was trying to like stall. There was a point jump at 134, I think. And um, I wanted to get, get the points because I knew I was going to be in the running and they still had World Series Europe left. Um, but to be honest with you, I wasn't really that devastated because like I just won the tournament before and now I'm on day six of the main and like what I'm, what I'm going to complain because I lost this, like, you know, who, who cares? Um, so it was like a perfect mindset to have, right? Um, and like even when I started running it back up, I never really thought that I was going to like keep – Spin. I don't know, dude. I was in such a like blur because I I, the, I won the tournament right before, so I was on like no sleep for uh, for like two weeks because I had like a day off before the main, and then you have like those couple days in between days one, two, and three, and then you just play straight through three through seven. I mean, I had a bad C trial in a sense that Sylvia was on my left with ship lead, but um, I had direct position on Jeremy, who I thought at the time was the best player left. Like, I always considered him better than me. Um, he's just, like, world class. And I'm glad that he's been doing so well these days and getting, like, some, some spotlight. But, uh, yeah, so he was on my direct right and was shorter. And then Russell Thomas had always – I've always thought that he was a good player, but he hadn't – I think he hadn't been playing full-time, like, leading up to the main. He had been working a, a job and had, had, had been, like, getting back into poker full-time. So he wasn't as like sharp at the time. Um, so that was a like, good timing for me. Not that I thought he was like a weak spot at the table by any means, but like in, in terms of like the top players at the table, maybe he was third or fourth, but, but I didn't feel like he was uh, like on Jeremy's level. Right. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, overall, I felt like it was a pretty good spot for me and like the stacks, the stacks were deep. So um, like really my only preparation for the final table was playing like really long sessions on purpose. Like I would play 16 hour sessions live to just prepare for uh, the likelihood that we could be playing like a really long final table for this, for this, uh, for this main. Um, and that's like literally exactly what happened. We, the first day we only played five hours to get to three handed. And then we played three handed for uh, 12 hours. Um, yeah. So it was, yeah, good, good practice. I chopped with Jesse heads up. I got 7.2 and he got 6.6. .6. So I had to send him like 1.1 million or something, or 1.3, something, I forget. It was, it was over a million. And I just had my parents write a check and send it in the normal mail, like a fucking idiot. And my parents' mail got stolen. And the only reason they know that is because their credit card bills didn't get paid. And then, and then some other, something else that they were sending just never showed up as well. So Jesse was texting me like, hey, I have like, these swaps to pay out and I'm waiting for this money to come. And I'm like, Oh, it's in the mail. So like what's going through his mind at this time where like, he's waiting on this huge payment that's just not coming. And I'm like, I don't know what the hell is going on. So yeah, eventually I had to go to the branch and like set up a new account, move all my funds over. And then we, we ended up wiring it, which is what we should have done in the first place. But. Why did it, why did it, so I didn't understand what happened to the, why, why was the, what happened to your parents' mail? Someone like the, someone the, stole the mail out of the mailbox. Just randomly, be, they, they, I mean, I'm sure it was like on purpose. No, I know, but I'm, it's like kind of crazy that they like that yeah. happened to be when the that check like it's like almost you'd have to know, right? Yeah. Like it was so, going out in that. Or, I got a new bank account when that happened, and then someone stole my signature and forged a check of mine like a few months later, probably from a home game, um, and I had to get a new account again. So that was like. Uh, no issues since then, but it was kind of crazy. Yeah, so I, I started once I started playing more tables and learning about the rewards programs on Stars. I I realized by like the spring of 2008 that I could get Supernova lead if I if I played a ton, and I, I basically had to play 24 tables of one two six max for 10 to 12 hours a day with one to two days off a month to do it. But I just felt like I could do it, and I remember telling my parents I was like. I'm going to make 250k this year playing one two online. I'm going to this is my win rate. I think my win rate was like 2 or something. Maybe, maybe more. $1 $2. Yeah, so my my win rate was like 2 BB 24 tabling and then I was going to make 110k in rake back and I was going to play like 2 million hands or something. Um so uh 
I had, uh, you have to get a million VPPs and I had like 300,000 in May. And, uh, so I was, I was like behind. Um, but I, I just started 24 tabling around that time and I, I felt like I could do it. And, uh, I mean, it was really hard. Like I hit a huge wall in, in November, but, uh, it was just like such a, uh, so when did you awesome actually wait? like late December? Yeah. Like I got it on December 30th and I think no I made, way. I think I made 240 that year or something. And, um, and, uh, rolling into early 09, I, Tony swap. So, so let me go back. You got two tournament packages as well as your, uh, <clears throat> rewards for supernova elite. So that year I took the main event and PCA main, and they give you like hotel and spending money and whatnot. So I played PCA main, uh, for the first time I swapped 5% with Tony and he chopped for one and a half million. So that now, now I went from like starting my career with maybe 30 K now I have like 300 something thousand. And, wow. uh, and, and now I, I, the next year I had played two, four and three, six and got super double lead. It didn't take as many hours because you play in higher stakes. And then 2010, I played uh five, 10 and 10, three, six to 10, 20. Um, once again, like hours went way down because the rate goes up. Um, so yeah, it was like a really good way to build my, my bankroll.